All right, you guys, today we're gonna try to tackle the bearing in this uh, boat trailer. And it's a, it's a fairly straightforward process, but if you've never done it before, it might be kind of daunting. So uh, we're gonna, in the next couple of minutes, we'll take you through how to do it and how to replace it, actually. Yeah, this is a do-yourself, so this is at my house, and hear my cat in the background, but uh, usually when you can tell a bearing is bad is when you have it jacked up and you just spin it. If you can hear, it's almost like a metal-on-metal metal contact, and then that's a, that's a good time to either repack the bearings with uh, the correct grease, or it's time to replace them. I bought this bow over the summer. I've had it for about four months, and... I'm pretty sure the guy that had it wasn't very mechanically inclined, so he probably never serviced these bearings. Because I just did the other side, and the other side was somewhat burned up. So I decided to just do this side and uh, just show you guys how uh, how I do it. And uh, maybe it'll save you guys a couple hundred bucks if you do it yourself. So let's get to it. Usually the first thing you do is you don't even have to pop the wheel off, especially on these small trailers. Um, the hub and the bearings are right inside this thing. So first thing you want to do is just pop this cap off and a screwdriver and a little plastic hammer usually does a trick. Kind of wedge it right in between there and just hit it it'll come out. And just turn the wheel 180 and hit this side too. Just kind of tap it and you can see it kind of popped out already. Kind of wedge the screwdriver up in there one more time. There you go. And uh, that's like the hardest part, really. Kind of right there. That is a castle nut that basically holds the entire thing together. And as you can see, it's not super tight. I don't think it's supposed to be super tight. But um, you can uh, you can also see there's a lot of water in there. And I pull this out first. Throw a cotter pin that prevents the uh, bearing from spinning. Let's pull, straighten this out. Pull out the other side. Here's a little tip for you guys. Hold it with the plug. There we go. That comes out. Keep that in a good spot. You don't lose it, and you can undo that with your finger. And that's pretty much it. You got a castle nut. Keep that in here. The whole thing should just pull right out, just like that. And it's really, it's really it's supposed to be that easy. And you can. I mean, that's really like that's like half half the work right there, just to get to this point. From here on out, you got this bearing. Come on out just like that. Here's the bearing. There's the bearing itself. Well, this is one of them. Now break this line. Yep. We're the fishing people. Fish all the time. So we got that side out. Got to do the other side. But the other side's got a, a seal on it. All you got to do is just kind of pry it out. As you can see, this seal is worn out too from the fishing line getting caught up on it. So all you gotta do is just pry it out. Usually, just kind of hit it with a hammer like this. Pry it out. That's done. And here's the bearing for this side. And it's got a lot of. Uh, and the new kit actually comes with a new bearing. New bearing, new seal, and so far you've only seen me take this piece out. So there's still this piece you gotta take out. And this piece has got like a conical shape to it, so the bearing can sit inside like that for all the, the uh, bearing needs. Okay, but the thing is, you gotta pack this bearing, and I'll show you how to pack that bearing in a little bit. But uh, essentially, it goes back in like that, and this seal actually sits on top just like that. So that was a cleaning process. I usually use just tissue paper and 
clean it out and the center out. So you're going to be removing a lot of grease from the black grease. As you can tell, the, the grease used to be red, but now it's black. So well, Once you get it to that point, it's time to knock it out. Knock out the, uh, the sleeves. And for that, uh, we're going to use a cinder block. Kind of do this, and you can see where the sleeves are at. So we at least have to locate them and pop it out once again with a big screwdriver. And this is how I do it. Well, that took a little longer than I thought, but I finally got it. It took about 10 minutes to get that bearing out. That last one was a bit a little B, you know what I mean? But some force and it'll be alright. Got a lot of dirt up in there, so I'm going to clean it off with this rag before we install everything. Let's pull, get all the dirt out. If you have any type of uh, cleaner, I'd suggest you clean it out. But I don't, so we're just gonna wipe it down very Now, all you gotta do is put everything back in. Um, just kind of keep in mind which side is which. So, good no brainer is lug nuts go on the outside. So, we put the back side on first. So, here you go. Here's the components for the back side. And what you want to do is uh, you want to put this other piece in first. It's almost like a, a bearing sleeve, external sleeve. Give it a little bit of oil or grease for that matter. And what I'm using for this is actually Super Guard uh, Marine Plus Grease. And I got it from the sports store. So make sure it's nice, nice and blue. At least this one's blue. I think they come in all different colors, but um, basically. You want to give it a little bit of grease. Excuse me. On the outside, just so it'll go in easy. It's a little bit like this. Dab it around the outside. And basically put it right in there, just like that. And lightly and easily tap it into place. So, let me show you how I do it. From the box, when you pull it out of the box, it actually sits in the box like that, and it'll fall out this side only. It'll only come out through this side like that. So when you put it in, it has to go in this way because the bearing actually sits like this in there. Okay, so like this. Usually, you want like a flat surface. Get like a, a socket or something. A lot of you guys will use a socket. There's a big old socket like that but I don't have one that's big enough so what you gotta do is you're gonna tap it lightly and you can tap it on the side but best way is just to tap it with your flat hammer just like that and then that's how I've been doing it but basically once you get to this step you can either find a an actual socket that's perfect or you can just easily put your screwdriver on there and just tap it in that's what I've been doing but be very very careful not to damage anything and uh, yeah that's what I've been doing All right, this is me pounding this in keep your screwdriver as straight as you can and just go at it And there you go, it's in. There it is, finished product. And everything looks good, just like that. That's it. Basically all I did was push this, uh, almost like this inner, inner race into the uh, bearing here, or the hub.
the spindle. And we'll go. And uh, after that, you gotta pack your bearings. And there's no real way to, or official way to pack these things, except for just get as much grease in here between these roller bearings here. Try to get as much grease as you can into this thing. That's all it is. And then you just drop it in. So, uh, easy way to do that is to just dunk it. A lot of people just do that. But, you now just to make sure you get grease into all the crevices, this is what I usually do. I usually just uh, go like this. Rub it here. Pack it in there. That's why they call it packing. Okay, so there it is. Some of the stuff's kind of packed up in there. Got to do a little bit more packing, and yeah, just basically just cram as much grease into this as you can, and that's the whole thing. I'm not gonna get much more packed than that. So, all right, so that's my bearing, as packed as I can get it. So, man, maybe a couple more spots here and there, but no big deal. Throw it right in here. Give a little test run, and it is uh, it's nice and smooth. All right, so once you get it to this level, there's still some areas right here. So what do you know? Pack some more grease in there. There you go. I pack a lot of grease. Um, the grease is the only thing that's keeping your wear bearings from burning up, and I think by design it's supposed to transfer some of the heat over to the the wheel as well too. So just pack it in even more. I was. I, I have a feeling that the more grease you have, the better it's going to be. So, pack it in. There you go. Try not to hit the seal. Uh, just hit the outer ring and get it flush with that. And that's it. That's the finished product on this side. Give you guys a better view of that. There it is. Okay. And at this point, flip it over to the other side. Bang the other one in. No, oh, maybe it shouldn't have packed. And now all you got to do is just clean the spindle off. And once that's cleaned off, you're almost, you're pretty much home free. So what I'll do is I'll <laughs> try to find the cleanest spot, which is this spot. Clean this off. Especially the surface where the seal is going to go onto, right at the back. Make sure that's clean. Make sure the threads are clean. And give a little bit more grease on the spindle itself. A little bit on the seal. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm ready to put everything back in. Okay. All right, so put it back in. Just like so. Make sure that doesn't fall out. So make sure it holds in there like that. You have to really, really pack it. So you're not actually gonna pack this bearing in. Well, it is packing, but you gotta pack this, the entire area in here. You gotta pack it. So go ahead and just throw as much goop in there as you can. So like that. Some people use like a, a squirting system, which probably will help you out a lot. Bearing, put it in, and it should ooze out. But kind of wiggle a little bit too. Kind of ooze out like that. Keep that in mind. Pack it some more. Well, I usually, and then I usually take your washer and clean this excess off on the washer. So the washer actually helps push everything back in too. So. This. There you 
Yeah, that should be everything right there. This bad boy in. a little bit wobble so just keep on turning until the wobble goes away. Hand tighten as far as you can. And once you get to the point where you can't hand tighten it no more, there you go. that's like perfect. And then there's a cotter pin that has to go in. So don't forget about that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Pretty much done. side and then you just gotta turn this guy turn I usually pin both of them I just turn it one way or or the other way it doesn't really matter but the key thing is to not have them stay straight because it'll pull out so turn it one way turn it the other way that's it you're done And no more grinding sounds. Yeah, it's smooth. No more grinding sounds. And last but not least, uh, this thing, the cap. Put the time for the cap back in. Clean the cap out. There's a lot of dirt in the cap. <sighs> Wipe off all the excess. Cold or something, but tap it in some more. Make sure it's in. Done deal. No wobbles. No weird sounds. All right. That's how you change your wheel bearing out on a trailer. Hey, if you watched this far already, I'm pretty sure you like what you've just seen. So please be sure to subscribe and check out our other videos. If you have any pictures you'd like to share with us, please post them up on our Facebook page or tag us on Instagram.